It's now my pleasure to introduce your May 2009 commencement speaker, Dr. Francis S. Collins. Dr. Collins is the former director of the National Human, Human Genome Research Institute at the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Collins led the successful effort to complete the Human Genome Project, a complex multidisciplinary scientific enterprise directed at mapping and sequencing all of the human DNA. This remarkable international project culminated in April of 2003 with the completion of a finished sequence of the human DNA instruction book, and all the data are now available to the scientific community without restrictions on access or use. Building on the foundations laid by the Human Genome Project, Dr. Collins is now leading the effort to ensure that this new information is translated into tools and strategies to advance biological knowledge and improve human health. Dr. Collins is a member of the Institute of Medicine and the National Academy of Sciences. On November the 5th, 2007, Dr. Collins received the Presidential uh, Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civic for his revolutionary contributions to genetic research. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join me in welcoming our 2009 uh, commencement speaker, Dr. Francis Collins. Dr. Collins. President Johnny, members of the platform party, Distinguished faculty, graduating students of the class of 2000, and especially parents, families, spouses, and significant others. You have sweated, slaved, and sacrificed to make this day possible, too. So, congratulations! Remember, parents, the best revenge is to live long enough to become a problem to your children. <laughs> and I am deeply honored to be asked to be your commencement speaker. But this is a real challenge for a scientist. I inquired and they said overheads, handouts, and PowerPoints would not be allowed. <laughs> well, who are you, class of 2009? I spoke to a senior. I got a little bit of a sense of uh, the remarkable group that's gathered here. You're a dedicated, diverse, and hardworking bunch. From undergraduate, graduate, and professional schools, uh, you have achieved great things and are going on to do more. And you are perhaps going to remember this day in particular because this is the final commencement for your distinguished president, Dr. Eugene Trani, for whom I think we all owe a huge debt of gratitude for his 19 years of service. He's that for the most part you are grateful for the experience you've had in here, for the dedicated faculty that have taken care of you over these times. There was that one unfair exam, but just let it go, okay? Just let it go. <laughs> you now join 125,000 alumni of BCU. Uh, you are, some of you going out with a bit of debt, the average debt across this country is 22,500 for an undergraduate who is receiving a diploma. You're in a school that's kept the tuition down, so it's not that bad here, right? <laughs> You're maybe a little worried about jobs. After all, the economy is not exactly welcoming you by its particular behavior, but don't worry. Statistics say that within a year from now, 95% of you will have a job or will be in school of some sort, and some of you won't even be living with your parents anymore, so. <laughs> from the atmosphere in this particular location at this school, that you all believe in what W.B. Yates said about education. And that is that education is not the filling of a pail, it is the lighting of a fire. You all seem pretty well lit to me, actually. <laughs> well, you're also going to be the first generation uh, where your lives will be profoundly affected by knowledge of your own DNA, the human genome. That human DNA sequence that you heard about in the introduction, our own instruction book, 
is 3 billion letters long. If you printed it out on standard paper with standard margins and reasonable font size and piled the pages on top of each other, they would be as high as the Washington Monuments. And you have that information inside each cell of your body. If we decided to have a reading of the human genome, I mean, it's a special day, why don't we just read the whole thing? And we could pass it around and each graduate could read uh, for a little bit and then pass it on to the next one. Probably not a good idea because uh, we would be here seven days a week, 24 hours a day for 31 years. And you have that amazing instruction book inside each cell of your body. And we now know the letters of that code, the first reference copy having been read out and placed in the public domain six years ago. That one cost us as taxpayers, about $300 million uh, to get that first reference copy. Most graduate students working in biology these days can't imagine how we did anything before we had that information. But here's the like, surprising part about the trajectory we're on. It's likely that in the next five to 10 years, each one of you will likely have your complete human genome, if you're interested, sequenced at a cost for less than $1,000, and placed in your medical record where it might be pretty useful some point where you need to know something about your own instruction book. You can think of the human genome as three books, all wrapped together. It's a shop manual for human biology. It's a detailed record of our shared human history. And it's the most detailed textbook of medicine that's ever been written. It's now time to really make that medical textbook come alive. And here at VCU, investigators are working at the forefront of those efforts, particularly in the areas deafness, our behavioral genetics, and our twin studies. What's going on here is very highly regarded by the human genetics community. Hundreds of genetic risk factors for cancer, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure have been discovered in the last two years using the information coming out of the Human Genome Project. And that's going to lead to more effective prevention based on the individual risks instead of a one-size-fits-all approach. More personalized selection of drug treatments, the right drug at the right dose for the right patient. And a new era of smart medicine where the treatments available are based on a detailed understanding of the cause of illness instead of empirical observations. But for this dream to come to pass, we do have to attend to a lot of other social and educational priorities. We must support the medical research needed to bring this promise into reality. We must work to ensure equal access to health care, and this is a crucial year for that long overdue dream to come true. And we must make sure that all members of the public are given the information they need to be informed medical consumers. Now, Richard Resba, who will be awarded an honorary degree today, did that by his leadership with a series of videos called Secrets of the Sequence. That kind of public information is desperately needed at a time where medical care increasingly is going to depend upon informed consumers. So even if you're not a science major, this is still all about you. As a teacher, a political leader, a lawyer, a writer, and most certainly,